And with that, welcome to the Red of Fate. Or in other words, the first part out of four of a Sakuatsu soulmate and coffee shop are you, which will end in angst, I guess? More about that at the end, though don't worry, it will have a happy ending and today we won't get really angsty, so enjoy! On a side note, this is a coffee shop as well as soulmate AU in which a red string appears whenever you touch your soulmate for the first time, tying you two together. Oh, Kiyomi, your favorite customer is back! Komori grinned widely at him and almost spilled the order he was currently making, laughing as he saw Sakusa scowl in response. The dark-haired barista rolled his eyes at his cousin's enthusiasm, turning around deliberately slowly, already well aware of who he was referring to. Through the door, as every morning at the same time, walked a person that could easily be titled Sakusa's worst enemy, or simply his polar opposite. Where the barista was rather introverted and kept to himself, Mia Atsumu loved the attention and socializing. He had a certain presence to himself that drew the eyes of everyone in his proximity to at least risk one short glance at the cocky blonde. While well, Sakusa usually had a frown on his face, though it was covered by his mask for the most time, Mia wore an arrogant smirk. He was the epitome of provocation, and what made it all the worse, it suits him. His whole posture was oozing this annoying confidence that he never seemed to lose. No matter how many times, Kiyomi shut him down. In the end, that was perhaps the actual problem. Mia had a poorly disguised crush on Sakusa, which, while leaving the barista baffled and questioning the blunt's intelligence even further, wasn't all that well received. Good morning, Ami! Sakusa's frown deepened, and this time he truly hoped that the other would be able to see it through the mask. He merely turned around, preparing what he knew Mia would order. Two weeks and 14 visits ago, he had to realize with mild horror that there was no use in correcting the blunt on his name. He wouldn't refer to him as anything other than Ami or Ami Ami. Sometimes he at least had the decency to call him Ami Kun, but that was rare. Ah, you already know what I'm getting. You know me so well, Ami. Of course I do. After all, you annoy me every morning with it. Atsumu laughed, seemingly oblivious to the poison dripping from each of his words aimed at him like dull blades. Somewhere to his right, Sakusa could hear Komori chuckle as well, and cursed his cousin for it. This had quickly become the highlight of the day for him, as if he loved to see Sakusa struggle. Then again, Sakusa had to admit that as obvious as Mia was with his intentions, he never crossed any boundaries. The barista knew much worse examples. Mia was just... persistent. He shook his head slightly, chasing the thought away. Why think about that? In the end, he was still just as annoying. It didn't change anything. Without a word, Sakusa placed the coffee, black and probably as bitter as Sakusa's gaze on the counter, staring him down. Thanks. He pulled out the change from his pockets, rising Sakusa not just with a small tip, but also with how fresh the money looked, though neither of them commented further. You know, I like to think that you are smiling at me under that mask. Then you are even more stupid than I thought. I didn't give you much credit to begin with, it's truly incredible. The blonde laughed again, though a playful whine accompanied it. Oh, come on, cut me some slack. I'm sure you have met much worse people working this job. He had, but he had also no reason to admit that. Don't you have somewhere to go, Mia? You usually never stay for chit chat. He turned around to emphasize his point. Well, you usually have other customers to tend to, but this morning it's fairly empty. 
He said it with his typical winning grin, yet Sakusa could see him from the corner of his eyes glancing at the clock, and to his relief another customer entering the door. There is one. Just go wherever you have to. Not even a bit curious, huh? It was teasing, and Sakos had no idea if he would answer him if he actually asked. Mia was talkative for sure, but weirdly enough, when Sakusa really thought about it, he knew close to nothing about him. His eyes widened as he realized that he was actually considering asking him. There was a certain curiosity invading his mind whenever it came to the man he would like to simply label a nuisance and be done with it. Before he had fully recovered from the shock, Mia sighed and laughed, throwing a quick goodbye in his direction. You know, you're really cold sometimes, Kyo. Sakusa glanced at him as Komori turned around to the next customer with a winning smile and took his order. I'm not getting paid enough to act nice. Yeah, well, I'm used to it, so I'm immune, but poor Atsumu always looks so hopeful when he gets in here. He knew it was teasing, but something caught his attention. Atsumu? Yep, that's what he likes to be called. He has a twin brother, apparently, so it's a matter of convenience. Another bright smile and he handed the coffee to the waiting customer before leaning on the counter and finally looking his cousin in the eyes. He told you, you know, but it looks like he has given up on it just like you apparently have given up on being called something other than Ami. You two are quite alike. We're not. Komori laughed at his expression. He must have looked horrified. Sure you're not, except for the flirting, the teasing, the special treatment. I'm not flirting with him. Maybe not, but he is flirting with you. I'm sure he does that with everyone, seems like the type. He tried his best to suppress the way his throat tightened at that. He didn't even know why, it was infuriating. Nope. Just you. He clenched his teeth, trying to ignore the warmth assembling under his skin. And let's be honest here, if he really annoys you that much, why don't you just switch shifts? He obviously has a rather strict schedule, so you should be safe any other time of the day. I like this shift. That didn't stop you before. Sakusa knew exactly what he was referring to and just clenched his teeth together. For all we know, he has a girlfriend at home and is just a jerk. Komori let out an exaggerated sigh. My god, Kyo! So, do you at least admit that you like him? He shut the drawer to the cash register close, with more force than necessary, and went to get something from the storage room. Luckily, the cafe filled with a small friend group shortly after he left so that his cousin couldn't follow him. This was stupid. He didn't like Atsumiya. Damn it! It was just Komori getting in his head. Nothing more. The next day, he tried to act as neutral as possible to Atsumu, ignoring his teasing attempts to coax a reaction from him and countering his flirtatious amends with utmost professionalism. It was far from easy, considering Atsumu had the unbelievable ability to get under his skin without much effort, even though Sakusa wasn't usually easily provoked. Komori watched them with a frown, rolling his eyes at his cousin's childish behavior while Sakusa ignored him as well. He was more surprised than ever to see Atsumu disheartened for the first time when he finished his order. Maybe this actually worked. This is what he wanted, so why... 
Why did his heart clench when he looked at him? He never thought he would see the blonde as anything other than confident, yet right now his confidence seemed to have taken a hit. Sarkosa hesitated, the cap still in hand. Are you going to give me my coffee, or...? It got him out of his haze, and he nodded while handing him the cap. Hatsune looked at him, but wilded. Are you going to take it? Now it was Atsuma's turn to nod slowly while his eyes lit up. Thanks, Ami. It never sounded so genuine before. He paid and left, leaving a very much confused Sakasa behind. What in hell was wrong with him? With Mia? With both of them? So? Shut up. Oh, come on. You almost made him cry and then that? You shouldn't play with a man's feeling like that, Kyo. What in hell are you even talking about? You handed him the cup. You, Sakasa Kiyomi, the world's most famous germaphobe, handed him the cup. By now, all too familiar heat crept up his face at the realization. I was wearing gloves. He insisted, even though the barista was well aware that it was a weak excuse. I know, you always do. Yet, you never hand someone their order, particularly not Mia. However, today... Okay, I get it. Kumari laughed. Oh my god, my cousin is in love. I'm not. Don't write him off just now. Kyo, who knows? Maybe you are soulmates. He was still laughing when he turned around to tend to the next customer, leaving Sakusa alone in his misery. Soulmates. What a stupid concept. He pitied the person who would end up stuck with him. The thought didn't let him go. No matter how much he hated it. Like a parasite, a pesky leech, it crept into his brain and buried its ugly claws deep into his consciousness. He couldn't stop thinking about it all night. And when the merciful rays of morning light ended his suffering and vile dreams, Atsumu walked into the shop, reminding him about the very real problem at hand. Adding to the quarrel within him, Kiyomi had to admit that his contentment with Atsuma's presence slowly but steadily grew. He didn't fail to notice that the blonde took great care not to touch him when taking the cup despite the gloves, that he never got to close and when their fingers touched once, he was in a hurry that day and almost spilled the coffee upon receiving it. He apologized profoundly. It was weird how much it meant to him, how much he cared to make Kiyomi feel comfortable and to show him that he respected his boundaries. After all, they were strangers, nothing more. Though, after a month of whatever this was, strangers perhaps wasn't the correct word anymore. Yet, acquaintances didn't sit right with him either. That day, their hands touched for the first time, Sakusa's heartbeat almost stopped. He had forgotten that he was wearing gloves and dreaded the consequences of his actions. It wasn't until much later that he realized with shock that it wasn't the touch itself that had petrified him. It should have. Everyone's touch, even most of his family, especially if unexpected, terrified him, yet it was overshadowed by another worry. He was afraid to see a red string appearing between them. And maybe, maybe even more that it wouldn't. There was something about Atsume, something he couldn't put his finger on between the arrogance and utter audacity this guy had that resembled compassion and care and something that must be summarized as warmth. 
It was something that left him wondering and feeling cold when he didn't show up one day. It was a Monday, the first day of the week, and Sakusa did his best to convince himself that he hadn't been looking forward to his shift in the morning and that, if he had, it wasn't because of a certain blunt customer. Komori looked at him knowingly, and for that alone, he fought the feeling in his chest all that much harder and kept his facade intact. It cracked, however, when 9.45 came around and Noatsumu was in sight. He clenched his teeth and continued ignoring the stares he got for the icy cold aura surrounding him. It was even more freezing than usual and people picked up on it. So, what's with that face? I don't know what you mean. Sure, and I'm not sure if I should be offended that you think I'm this stupid or just drop it since you're clearly heartbroken right now. I'm not. Alright, and this... He motioned to Sakusa. Also has nothing to do with Atsumu. Got it. Sakusa said nothing and just huffed. It didn't get better the next day. Atsumu was still missing, Sakusa's mood still worsening and Komoro still wouldn't just let it go. Nothing changed, yet after Atsumu was absent for an entire week, it got increasingly harder for Sakusa to deny that he was worried about him. That he missed his company, his smile, his warmth. You clearly like him, even though you're in denial about that. You can pretend as long as you like, it won't change a thing. But the best part is, he clearly likes you too. What is the problem, Kyo? Why are you so insistent? You are almost as annoying as him now. They cleaned up after their shift together. On the weekends, they sometimes volunteer to take the last shift of the day for some extra cash. You are my cousin. I want you to be happy, yet here I am in the front row seats of Kiyomi throws away his best chance. As funny as part of it is, I don't want to see that. Sakusa rolled his eyes. The smaller was completely exaggerating, again. Look, I know things like this aren't easy for you, but hasn't Atsumu always been considerate with that? So? That hit a nerve. So what's the problem? He glared at him. He's considerate, right? He is too considerate. I can't ask that of him for the rest of his life. The realization cut deep, and he was once again reminded why he hated the concept of soulmates more than anything else. The rest of his life. If... If we touch, and it turns out we are soulmates, he will be stuck with me. He doesn't deserve that. He turned around, gathering his things and the keys. He didn't need to see the pitiful expression on his cousin's face. That's not how soulmates work. Come on, do you really think you never deserve to be with someone? To be happy with someone? Sakusa didn't answer. He just left. Fact was, even if he might deserve it, even if this wasn't his fault at all, Atsumu didn't. Atsumu or any other poor soul in the universe, or whatever would choose for that matter, didn't deserve this. Sakusa knew how difficult it was. He was suffering from it every day and he didn't feel the need to share his misery with anyone else. He tried dating and it was the worst. Most people didn't know how to handle him and either shied away from the beginning or tried to fix him and got frustrated when it didn't work. What hurt most, however, were the few who genuinely wanted them to work out. The few that tried their best to respect his boundaries and invested so much. 
he wanted to love him with all of his flaws and both he and them were devastated when it failed. When they had to admit defeat because it got old too much. He's been through it twice, both of which could have been a soulmate yet he never knew. Sakusa is a coward. He never once tried to see if he shared this special connection with any one of his partners, even the genuine ones. After he saw the pain being with him caused them, both of them, he was more than glad about it. The thought the faintest touch could have tied one of them eternally to him and his suffering was unbearable. Sarkasa might seem heartless at times, but he wasn't cruel. Why would he do this to anyone? Why should it be any different with Atsumu? Yes, he liked him. It became painfully obvious in his absence, and that was exactly the reason he should stay away from him. Atsumu was genuine and good. Under his shitty personality lies a deep passion, and Kiyomi envies the person that one day will be able to share it with him. Thank you all for watching to the end, this first part of whatever this is. I'm very excited however for the series because I think this might be one of the best things I've ever written. I'm very proud of it. Also what I wanted to mention, um, this was randomly chosen like the genre and the AU. So I was very confused at first how to bring Coffee Shop AU and Angst together, but I think I managed. You tell me in the comments as soon as we get to the actually angsty part. And now I hope you have a wonderful and amazing day. And if you liked it, consider leaving a like because it would really help me. And if you don't want to miss out on anything in the future, like the future and the next part, subscribe.